Well, I will get started. Today I'm talking about uh, museum HVAC projects and funding them with the Minnesota Legacy Grants Program. I'm going to talk about what you need to know about museum environments before you apply and then talk through the process from start to finish. For those who don't know me, my name is Megan and I'm the Outreach Conservator at the Minnesota Historical Society. My specialty is helping people take care of the things they want to preserve. Most museums and archives would say that they have a duty to protect and preserve the items in their collection. That's based on maybe your mission statement, uh, promises to donors, expectations of the community, and professional standards. One of the most important things you can do to preserve a collection is to make sure that the environment is stable and has the appropriate temperature, relative humidity, and airflow and ventilation. Without proper environmental controls, uh, your collection will suffer damage. Mold can start growing anywhere above 65% RH, uh, which usually is far exceeded in the summer here in Minnesota. High humidity can also lead to corroding metals, not just iron, but also brass and tin and lead. High temperatures can cause photographs, film, and plastics to deteriorate more rapidly. And paper materials will yellow faster. Fluctuating relative humidity can cause wood to crack or objects made with more than one type of material to split apart and photographs will curl. So let's talk about HVAC systems. Today, I'm only going to talk about relatively modern buildings, not historic structures. There are two main reasons for this. The first is that the grant requirements for buildings on the National Register are more strict. All work has to meet the Secretary of the Interior standards for treatment of historic properties. If you're interested in learning more about this, get in touch and we can chat more specifically about HVAC and National Register properties. The second reason is that there are fewer ways to safely manipulate the environment in a historic structure. Even if it's not on the National Register, and you can put in as many ducks as you want, there are still limitations to what you can achieve. Historic buildings aren't built with vapor barriers, so when you try to add humidity, it travels out through the walls, and ultimately there's less control over the relative humidity, and you're shortening the lifespan of the building. There are steps we can take to improve the environment, and we still want control of the temperature, but it's a different topic, so I won't cover it today, really. I have one more important point to make before we jump in. The primary purpose of the grants program, uh, quoted here on this slide, is to preserve significant historic and cultural resources. At least that's the point as it pertains to HVAC systems. When we fund HVAC, it's so that collection, storage, and exhibit areas can reach museum standards, which just means uh, the generally agreed upon parameters for temperature, relative humidity, and ventilation that will best protect and preserve your collections. I'll discuss standards more later, but the point is that we don't just want to fund the replacement of an old broken furnace. If the old furnace wasn't able to meet museum standards, then the project should be to replace it with something that can. That's why later on we'll talk about hiring mechanical engineers to evaluate and design new systems before you proceed to installation. So how do you know if it's time for a new HVAC system? The best way is that you're actively monitoring the environment with data loggers and they're showing major problems with your environment, such as high or low or fluctuating temperature and relative humidity. Other ways you can tell it's time include uh, documented problems with humidity. For example, if you regularly notice that it's 80% relative humidity in there in the summer over and over again. You might also notice some condition problems in your collection like mold or pests. This can mean the problem is more advanced. You might also know it's time for a new HVAC system if your old system is broken and can't be repaired. If it's reaching its anticipated lifespan, most systems are only built to last 20 years. With good maintenance, you should be able to stretch that to 30 years. If your old unit is really expensive, sometimes you can get energy savings with a new unit. 
But even though new systems are more energy efficient, they might not actually save you money because you should be using it to improve the control you have over the environment, not just to save on operating costs. No matter what reason you have for needing a new HVAC, the grant program requires you to collect environmental data from a data logger before you apply. If you're not already collecting this data on your own, you can take advantage of our equipment loan program. So if you send me an email, I can send you a data logger for a month. When you return the logger, I analyze the data and send you a report summarizing the results. The internal environment can change dramatically with seasons. Uh, so best practice is to get readings during all four seasons. You can borrow the data logger from me multiple times. So that is really the best way to understand your internal environment is data logger readings over all four seasons. Even if you're not sure you need a new HVAC system, you should still do this because it's really helpful to understand what's happening in your environment. Um, if you're logging the environment on your own, gather four seasons of data before moving on to a system evaluation, if possible, because this will give you the best understanding of your environment and also the best chance of getting a new system designed that will work all year long and not just in the winter or the summer. We can have really big goals for our museum environment. You might think that the ideal museum environment that you should be striving for or that I'm insisting you achieve is a straight line at 70 degrees Fahrenheit and 50% relative humidity. But this is expensive. It's not sustainable for like the world and it's not necessary for most of our collections. Some types of collections need really specific environments to survive, often in a completely different set points. Archeological iron needs relative humidity as close to zero as possible. Uh, cellulose nitrate and acetate film likes cold storage. But for a general collection, we're more flexible. You need to know what your goal environment is before you apply for an HVAC project. There are a couple of professional standards you can choose from. Here are two examples on this slide. One is from the American Institute for Conservation and another is from the Canadian Conservation Institute. These standards agree on several different points. Absolutely the most important thing is that your environment has minimal fluctuations, meaning that on a daily or hourly basis, the temperature and humidity are stable and they are not changing that much. On a larger scale, you should allow for seasonal drift. Your temperature and humidity should both be lower in the winter and higher in the summer. You should aim to have humidity within 40% and 60% throughout the year, hanging out just above 40 in the winter and just below 60% in the summer. In most cases, this will require some humidification and dehumidification from your HVAC system, but it also requires some clever use of temperature settings. To reduce the amount of humidification and dehumidification you need, your temperature should be set in the mid 60s in the winter and the low 70s in the summer. You can see in this data logger chart that the temperature is fluctuating around 70 degrees and the relative humidity is fluctuating in the low 20s. If the temperature was reduced to say 65 degrees, you'd be able to get the relative humidity at least above 25% and maybe even 30%, a minimum goal that's achievable without adding humidity. If you decide to keep temperatures at a more comfortable level for people in the winter, know that this results in a very dry environment that can harm your collection. If your museum has zones, you can keep the exhibition and office spaces at a higher temperature and your storage spaces at a lower temperature. If your museum doesn't have zones, that might be something that a good HVAC design can make happen. If your ability to add humidity is limited, this is the only way you can protect your collections from huge seasonal changes in humidity by controlling the temperature. Uh, now I'm gonna go off on a bit of a tangent about mold. Why is it important to use environmental loggers even if you already know that you need a new HVAC system because of mold? There are actually lots of reasons you might have mold in your collection and new HVAC might not solve your problem. Some different reasons that you might have mold include the object was already moldy when you brought it into the collection because you can't see the early signs of mold spore germination, it's invisible. Uh, when mold can also be caused by poor ventilation in a space, for example, a stuffy closet. Uh, 
Objects stored in warm or cold spots in the museum can have mold growth, which is why you shouldn't store objects right next to windows or external walls. Uh, plus, windows and external walls in a poorly sealed building can have uh, condensation on them, like in this picture. Uh, this is frozen condensation. Um, so that will increase the relative humidity in a very local area, and objects stored near there can grow mold on them. You could also have a leak or a hidden leak that you don't spot right away. Or even if you had a leak in the past that you already fixed, but the relative humidity didn't go down fast enough. So mold growth can start anytime the relative humidity is elevated really above 60%. Okay, so let's talk about grants. The grants program is divided into small grants under $10,000 and large grants over $10,000. The small grants have a deadline four times a year. If your application gets sent back for revision, you just resubmit it at the next deadline. Uh, if the, the large grants have a pre-application deadline in the spring, once per year, the pre-application is a required step where we provide feedback and help you improve your application before the final application deadline in the summer. Uh, this year's pre-application deadline is May 29th. An HVAC grant is typically a three-step process. You start with an evaluation of your current environment and system. After this is complete, you work with an engineer to design a new system that will work with your building and your collection. After you have a set of design plans, then you move on to the installation. So three steps. Each step is a different grant. The evaluation is a small grant. The design could be a small or large grant, depending on scale. The installation, I'd say, is typically a large grant, but it could be small if it's a very small space. In some situations, you can do a design and installation grant in one step. This is usually only appropriate for very small projects or very urgent projects. The evaluation should indicate whether this is the most appropriate option in your situation, and you can also talk to me about it if you're not sure. But usually it's best to go for the three-step process. The HVAC evaluation is the place to start when you've decided that you need a new HVAC system. It's a small structured grant. A structured grant means that it has a different application than a normal small grant, grant which is easier to fill out. There are a few pieces of information that you need, but for the most part, you don't have to write big, long narratives about what the project will encompass and why it's valuable, because we already know what the project will encompass and why it's valuable. The point of the evaluation is to hire a qualified HVAC engineer or mechanical engineer with experience in museums to examine your building and your system and consider the changes and improvements that are feasible and necessary. At the end, you'll have a report with their findings giving you options for how to proceed. I just wanna note here that sometimes the engineer will also point out aspects of your building envelope that need to be improved to achieve the best museum environment. So that it could include getting better doors, fixing the roof or sealing up windows. This is important work and it's true that it will really help improve your museum environment, but it's typically not something that is funded by this grants program. So if you have questions about that, let me know. The application for the HVAC evaluation requires that you include environmental monitoring data as an attachment. Minimum is one month of data. Best practice is a full year of data showing seasonal changes. Again, the reason why we want a full year is so that you really understand your museum environment all year long. And that will give you the best information to proceed. In your application, you should also describe the conditions that led to you to apply for this grant. For example, if you noticed high humidity in the exhibition space in July, you find mold in the library collection, um, or if your equipment is regularly breaking down, it's worthwhile to include that information. Before you apply, you should have already reached out to three potential consultants to receive quotes. The consultant is a mechanical engineer, preferably with some museum experience. In your application, you should include the name of your preferred consultant and include their quote as an attachment. Don't sign any contracts until you receive the grant, but use their quote to fill out the budget. 
Finally, make sure you describe the qualifications of the people who will be involved in the project. Now say you're approved for your HVAC evaluation. Now you can reach out to your preferred consultant and sign a contract and get started. You have one year to do the project, complete any required conditions on the grants portal, and then submit the final report. After the final report has been received and approved by the grant staff, then you can move on to the next step. You can't move on until the final report has been approved, and that's true for all of the grants that I will be discussing. So HVAC design. As a reminder, HVAC design grant will have different requirements if this is for a national register building. So this really only applies for all other buildings. The design grant could be small or large, depending on scale. It's not a structured grant, so you have to fill out a full application. The purpose of the design grant is to hire a mechanical engineer to design a system based on your preferred option from the evaluation. The HVAC construction documents that are produced in this grant must be peer reviewed before completion by a different qualified mechanical engineer. Questions and issues with the design have to be resolved. The designer should guarantee that their design will maintain the environmental parameters that your collection requires for at least 12 months. We recommend that you get this guarantee. Tips for a successful application here. Uh, include the evaluation report as an attachment, please. Include your environmental monitoring data also. Include a map of the facility with areas marked that will be affected. You should have something like this in your evaluation anyway. In the application narrative, describe the con current conditions in your space and propose changes to the environment. What temperature and humidity set points do you need to achieve in your space? And what professional guidelines are you basing that on? Describe how you will select and hire a qualified consultant, or if you already have. You have to follow procurement guidelines. These are described in the grants manual, and they're different depending on total project costs. So if it's under $10,000, it might be different than if it's at a higher price point. All of these requirements are set out in the grants manual. Uh, again, you have to describe everyone's qualifications. When you're approved for the design grant, you then hire a consultant and get started. Typically, you have a year to do the project, although it can be longer for some large grants. You have conditions or milestones to complete on the grants portal after this grant is approved. So some of the common milestones that you might have to do throughout the project include uh, showing us how you followed procurement requirements, getting a peer review of the design. Uh, after the project is complete, you submit the final report. When this has been received and approved, then you can move on to the final step. HVAC installation is typically a large grant. The purpose of this grant is to purchase equipment and install everything using the peer-reviewed designs from your previous grant. The final product of this grant is a little different. Here we require 30 days of environmental monitoring data showing that your new HVAC system is meeting the parameters that you designed for. We recommend that the contracts are not paid in full until this testing period is over, and we also recommend that the contractors guarantee work will maintain the parameters for 12 consecutive months. Tips for writing this application. Include as attachments the evaluation report, the peer-reviewed design report, and your environmental monitoring data. Make sure there's a map of the facility. Again, this should be somewhere in one of your attachments. In the narrative, describe the temperature and humidity set points that this new system should achieve and what professional guidelines you based that on. Describe the current conditions in your space, how they'll change when you have a new HVAC system and why it's so important. Describe how you will select and hire a qualified consultant or if you already have. Again, you have to follow procurement requirements, which are different, again, based on project cost. Describe everyone's qualifications. Lots of similar requirements here. Finally, I strongly recommend that in this application, you describe the steps that you're going to take after the grant is completed to maintain the system because HVAC systems last a lot longer when they're properly maintained and regularly assessed. And it shows your long-term commitment to the project. The milestones that you might have to complete during this project include showing how you've met procurement requirements, interim project reports, 
30 days of environmental data after the equipment has been installed, and a site visit from grant staff. Finally, if you really think a design build grant is the right option for you, again, it could be a small or large grant depending on scale. This grant would involve hiring a mechanical engineer to design a system based on the preferred option in your evaluation and then hiring contractors to install the system based on that design. So again, you have to start with an evaluation anyway. The final project here will also be 30 days of environmental data showing that the new system meets the parameters that you chose. But a very important point in this process is that you need, need, need to have the design peer reviewed before you move on to installation. This will be a milestone that you have to complete, but I really recommend that you don't proceed to installation before completing this step, even secretly. Um, if you proceed to installation before doing the peer review and the peer reviewer requires some changes to the design, then you're in trouble. You have to pay any costs associated with changing the installed system. So please follow the steps that I have set out and don't skip anything. Okay, so the attachments and narratives for the design build application are the same as described earlier, but you need everything for both stages. You'll include the evaluation and the environmental monitoring data, map of the facility, describe the temperature and humidity set points you want to achieve and, and the professional guidelines you're following. Describe how you'll follow procurement to hire both the mechanical engineer and the contractors. The procurement requirements depend on total project cost. I recommend that contracts aren't paid in full until the 30-day test period is successfully completed. The design engineer and the contractors should both guarantee that work will maintain the parameters for 12 consecutive months. And you should include your maintenance plan for when construction is completed. So lots of similar stuff. This grant might work for you, uh, but there are more conditions and milestones attached, and that can make this seem less appealing to fund in a competitive grant round. If you go this route, make sure it is fully justified based on your circumstances. The milestones you might see in the projects include uh, showing how you've met procurement requirements, submitting the completed design plans, submitting the peer review by a different qualified mechanical engineer, 30 days of environmental data and a site visit from staff. Having a properly functioning HVAC system is one of the most important ways you can preserve your collection, and it's hard to overstate how much of a difference it will make over the long term. But buying new equipment, hiring qualified consultants, and doing the necessary construction and installation to set everything up is expensive. The grants program is here to help, but grants can be very competitive. These grants, the large grants, are very competitive. Following the basic guidelines I've described above, including the correct attachments, hiring qualified and experienced consultants and contractors, and making sure that you're communicating what you're doing, why you're doing it, and why it's so important, these will help you succeed. I'm here to help, so please get in touch with me if you have any questions, and I can take some questions now if you have any. If you don't have any questions, feel free to get in touch with me anytime. Email or phone is both fine.